Hi, I'm going to try and run through the steps necessary for our Photoshop project and uh, hopefully this will be of some supplemental help to you when you're trying to do your own project. So let's first look at the uh, project sheet and uh, get a, an idea for what the finished uh, project is meant to look like. And one thing I want to point out is that uh, in this sort of simplified four-step uh, explanation here, you can see that we're just layering images on top of other images. So we're going to start with the Google Earth image that matches our uh, site plan perspective as closely as possible. Then we're going to add our site plan and edit it so uh, everything's trimmed away by what we want to show. Then we're going to dress it up a little bit, just like we did uh, to our sketch by adding some some foliage and maybe some people. And, and that creates our finished product, a sort of quick and dirty visualization that's actually uh, fully three-dimensional and tells us a lot about our proposed site. Okay, so it's, it's very much a process of layering. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at our uh, Matka Boska. Let's take a look at what we're working with. I've got uh, one of the one of the students uh, render sketches, and this is what we're going to use for our project. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this, and since I already have Photoshop launched, it's good, it should open this right in Photoshop. And of course, it doesn't. It opens it in the Windows Viewer. So I'm going to uh, select it once, then right click on it and say open with Photoshop. Of course I could open it through Photoshop in the ordinary way. Okay, so here's our Plano sketch and it's got, uh, looks like pretty strong two-point perspective. Um, if I were just to draw some lines in here uh, on a new layer, we can see that these these vanishing points are going off there somewhere and it looks like they're going to meet somewhere here. Yes, fairly convincing perspective. This is going to be a good subject. And you know where our vanishing points meet. That's the horizon. So it looks like our horizon wants to be, you know, someplace, somewhere in, in the order of there, right? <clears throat> we can see the tops of the buildings below the horizon. And this tall building is clearly... Uh, above the horizon uh, because the vanishing lines of perspective are, are going down. Looks like I missed this one. I can see where, where she's actually drawn it in there. But uh, same basic thing. It's just approximate, okay? So we, we know our horizon is going to be somewhere around there, yeah? Okay, so what my first task is to go to Google Earth, find the Plano site, and find a view that actually matches this perspective as well as I can. All right, so on Blackboard... I gave you these KMZ files, and this is a Google Earth uh, output file, and it's a quick way of jumping right to the site. Of course, you don't need these. You can find the site on your own. Uh, these also have the boundary, which is nice. Uh, you can keep track. That's the boundary that you that you drew in, uh, when, we, when we were sketching. So I should be able to just double-click on one, and it should launch Google Earth. Well, Google Earth was already launched, actually. And so it takes me right to the Plano site. If you're have, having trouble with these KMZ files taking you to the sites, try launching Google Earth first, um, meaning you have to download those KMZs from the website. Some people were able to just double-click on them on the website and it opened Google Earth and took you there. Other people, especially Mac users, uh, had to first download them. Okay, so here's our site. And let's look again at the perspective that we're looking for. Here's South Street. That's the east-west street uh, that borders our project. And we're looking at maybe, I don't know, a 40, almost a 40-something degree angle here, 30-something degree angle there. Um, that's going to form our perspective. So I'm just going to eyeball that. Here's South Street. And I'm just going to see if I can get a uh, perspective that's going to get us kind of close to that. And this one's going to be a little tricky because... I need to see that horizon. Remember, the horizon was a big part of this one. Um, so let's see. Maybe something more like that. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Remember, it was like about a 40 degree, about a 30 degree. 
So that might be fairly close, but I do need that horizon. Um, well, let's see. So this is this is looking almost okay. I'll try it when I have the view I like. Um, I'll go ahead and just save this out to an image file and I'll say file save image and I'm gonna put this in our appropriately named directory This is Google Earth Perspective Arial. Take the moment to name your files correctly. Oops, had caps lock on. I'm not going to change it now, though. I can go ahead and open my Google Earth Perspective, and here it is. So what I need to do now is, is layer the two one on top of the other. And before I do that, let me find out some things about them both. Uh, when I look at this Google Earth Perspective Aerial and I check the image size from the pull-down menu, it tells me some things about the image. I'm not surprised to see this resolution of 72 ppi because it's low-res export from Google Earth. I'm going to cancel that and make my Plano Perspective sketch current and look at the same dialog box, image, pull-down, image size, and I can see I'm working at a much different resolution, a resolution of 200 ppi, so almost three times the resolution, okay? I, I can already tell that this is going to cause problems when I try uh, and merge them together, um, to which this sketch is going to be huge in comparison to the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and resample this right off the bat at, uh, at 200 ppi, and to do that, it's back to the image size dialog. I'm going to change that resolution to match my sketch. And I'm making it larger, so I'm going to go ahead and use the bicubic, bicubic smoother and say OK. And you can see it's already giving me the idea, uh, giving me the dimensions for the new size at 200 ppi. When I say OK, it go, it, uh, the, you see the enlarged image. Oh, and I forgot to turn off some other stuff. Turn off streets, turn off all this other stuff. Uh, okay, so there it is. Now they kind of match, uh, or match a little better. Now I'm going to merge them together. Uh, what I need to do is, um, ordinarily, I would um, copy this file into the uh, aerial background just because it kind of makes sense logically. But because I drew these sort of guidelines in this other file, you see they're on their own little uh, masked layers, uh, a little complicated to work with lines in Photoshop. At first, it's much easier in Illustrator, so I don't want to get into that now. I'm going to delete those later. But I'm going to see if I can use them for now. So I'm going to, instead of uh, putting my site plan on top of this, I'm going to put my aerial under my site plan. Same net result, right? So to do this, I'm just going to do a simple Windows copy paste. Uh, but first, I need to select the pixels which I want to copy. Uh, remember, everything in Photoshop. Uh, you're editing uh, on a selection set, okay? Oh, uh, one other thing I think I mentioned in class, the background layer, just double click on it, it'll turn it to layer zero and say okay. Uh, background layers are a sort of vestigial feature of Photoshop. Uh, they, they, for our purposes, they just get in the way and prevent certain types of edits. So whenever you see a background layer as a layer name, just double click on it, layer zero, then you'll have a footy, fully editable layer. Okay, so I'm going to select all. That's selecting all the pixels. I'm going to do, you can do a uh, edit, copy, and edit, paste, but everyone knows the Windows shortcuts, right? Just control C for copy. I'm copying those pixels. When I go here, control V, and it's exactly what I expect. It pasted those pixels um, right on top of of my uh, existing art and on a new layer. Uh, one photo, one layer in Photoshop. Oh, I forgot to double click on my background layer here. Layer zero, it's a regular layer now, okay. So I know I want this under my uh, sketch. It's the background after all. So I'm just gonna drag it to the bottom and we see it now hidden, uh, but that's okay. We know where it's supposed to be, right? I, I'm turning my layer zero off uh, to reveal it. And why don't I rename these by double clicking? So this is base. Aerial. It's a good way to not go crazy. Double clicking, and this is site plan 
sketch. Okay, so now I've got my two layers. All I need to do is match them up. Let's see, when I turn this off, I see also that I've lost some of this, but funny enough, it's actually still there. Uh, if I make that layer current, and just with my regular cursor arrow, you can see that I've got all this larger photo, but it's not sort of fitting on my, uh, uh, what they call the canvas. And I can enlarge that, and I'll, I'll always crop it down later. At this point, I don't know how, how large I really want my final image to be. So it's safe to go to image canvas size. And so this is the sort of, it's almost like the artboard in Illustrator. Uh, it's the canvas size, not the image size. And I'm just going to kick that way up to like 18 by maybe 16 and say OK. And you see what we get when I zoom out, Control minus? It's giving me a lot more space here. And it looks like I just did get it in east, uh, left and right. And I've got extra on top. All right, so now I'm in business. I can zoom in a little bit, and my goal, as you can see, is to align this site with my aerial. And you can see it's in the ballpark, although I'm definitely going to have some issues. If I try to line up the horizon line, which I'm doing now, um, the site's not where I want it to be, probably. So we'll see how it goes. My next step is going to be to get rid of some of my paper. Okay, remember this is just a photograph. These are just pixels. So what I need to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to remove the pixels that are not my buildings. I'm going to turn off my other the lines I drew, my perspective lines and horizon line for right now, and just think about the pixels. So remember, Photoshop, pixels. There are no lines there drawn um, in my sketch. It's all just pixels of light. Okay, so what I need to do, it's an illusion, it's a photograph. Control zero, zoom extents. Control plus, zoom in. I need to get rid of the pixels that I don't want to show. You do this by selecting them. Every edit in Photoshop is done on the selected pixels. There are many, many ways of selecting pixels, and to some extent, the art of Photoshop is the art of making careful selections. Uh, if we look up here below our cursor, uh, we see these uh, uh, marquee tools. Uh, the rectangular marquee is next down. So I can select that, and it's, this will allow me to just drag a rectangle. And by doing so, I've selected the pixels within that rectangle on the current layer, okay? And this is known as the marching ants. And when the marching ants are going, any edit I do will, will be applied to only those pixels within uh, the marching ants, within the marquee. So I can just hit delete, and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting rid of pixels, and they're repaving my street. So I picked a great time to do this video. Uh, that's that bumping noise is. To get rid of the marching ants, control D. So that's useful. Um, I can drag rectangles and hit delete, base bar pan. Uh, I drag rectangles and hit delete. And that gets me pretty close, but what about these other uh, more irregular shapes? Well, there's many, many, many types of selection tools. Next down from the rectangular, by the way, you know it's a flyout when you see that little triangle on the tool? So we have rectangle, elliptical, single row, that's a single row of pixels, and so on. Uh, beneath that is the um, polygonal lasso tool, which also is on a flyout. Lasso, polygonal, and magnetic lasso. Let's try the lasso tool first. What this is, is almost like a sketch. I can drag any type of irregular shape I want. And when I let go, it's selected. Now, these look curved, but you'll remember that pixels are square. And when we zoom in, we see that, in fact, the selection is obeying the pixels. You cannot select half a pixel. You can only select a whole pixel. It's either selected or it is not. So with this selected, I can hit delete. Now what happened, I'm going to control Z to undo that. If my base aerial happened to be the current layer and I hit delete, it would delete the pixels from that layer. That's a very common mistake when you're starting out. So make sure you have the layer current that you uh, on which you wish to do your edits. Okay, so I'm going to hit delete. All the edits I'm doing now are just deleting pixels. I'm just trying to get down to my base buildings here. Uh, on the same flyout, the lasso is the polygonal lasso tool. Try to get rid of marching ants, control D. And um, sort of not surprisingly, this is the tool that's going to get me the closest. 
I can just pick a point and it's making this uh, polygonal selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to pick a point, pick a point, pick a point. See what it's doing? It's making a complex polygon and I'm just defining the corners. Now I'm doing this kind of quick and dirty because I'm trying to keep the video short, even though I know it's already long. And you'll see that your cursor changes. It's that little zero above it. See the little zero? little circle, just like the pen tool in Illustrator. That's when you know you have a closed shape and you see the marching ants and you hit delete and it's gone. And so I'm going to use that same tool to get rid of all the pixels that are in the way of me seeing my base aerial, which is a lot of them. So I'm basically deleting the paper that my site plan sketch was on, and I'm leaving just the geometry of the sketch. Get rid of marching ants, control D. Now, this is a very crude way of selecting pixels, and Photoshop is a very actually refined tool. And so uh, before I move on and finish doing this uh, sort of crude cleanup, also you can double click to close that shape. You can refine this edge when you have a, a, selection to, a selection going with the marching ants. And to do that, under the Select pull-down, Refine Edge. And what you see here is it softened the edge with this feather control. I'm going to take the feathering down to zero. Okay, now it's the hard edge that we had before. So by feathering the edge, you can get a more gradual selection. All right, Up here in the View mode, uh, this is for your help. There's different ways of visualizing the selection. Uh, some people find different ones more useful, um, and so on. Uh, I think the on white or the overlay maybe works works well for me. Uh, okay, so I can adjust that feather and make it a very smooth transition. That doesn't mean that the pixels aren't selected. When you zoom in, you'll still see a jagged. Uh, curves, but it just changes on what it's what Photoshop is doing to those selected pixels. I'm going to kick this up to about three, and when I zoom in on that area, you can see how it's uh, it's got a smooth line, uh, more in keeping with what we know about how objects really look. You don't get that hard hard edge, which is the mark of bad Photoshop. So using these tools, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly. Uh, select and delete the rest of the pixels. Okay, now that I've got my two images uh, merged together, my site plan on my aerial, I need to try and adjust the perspective. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these uh, other uh, lines I drew because I think they've outlived their usefulness. So now I have two layers only, my site plan and my base aerial. Yeah. So with the site plan current, I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do just by scooching this into place. Maybe the whole thing's a little too big. Uh, I can go to the um, free transform tool, which gets me up my plain old Windows bounding box. And I'm going to hold down shift and just try and shrink it a little. Well, maybe that's getting me a little closer to how things want to be. Um, okay, I can see that they're both... Uh, enter to take that edit. Both uh, angles are a little too steep. See my, see my lines of perspective compared to my boundary are a little too steep. What if I um, scrunch them down a little with just the Windows bounding box? That seems to actually put them in nicer perspective. Uh, but suppose that uh, the height was critical. And, um, you know, maybe uh, it's working more on one side or the other. I'm going to escape to not take that. There are lots of other tools for editing. And let's look at a few of those right now. Um, one under the edit pull down, transform, we can do a skew. And the skew sort of gives you control in a different way. Uh, you can sort of uh, uh, warp the photograph in different ways. And um, maybe this is going to help me out. Just ways of tweaking that, uh, tweaking that perspective. Of course, the best thing would have been 
if I had matched the perspective perfectly, but, you know, uh, wouldn't that be nice? I'm going to escape to not take that. Let's try a couple more. Go to image, uh, sorry, edit, pull down, transform, distort. Distort offers kind of the same thing where you're warping the image overall. This is working kind of nice for me. I like how how I'm bringing these lines of perspective more parallel to um, you know to my boundary, which is really what I'm trying to match. And I'm going to escape, and we'll look at a few more before I I haven't seen anything that I really love yet. Let me go to edit again, transform. And uh, let's look at um, distort. Did we do that one already? I think we did. Edit, transform, perspective. Now, just the I, fact that it's called perspective you, it would seem to have a lot of promise. But actually what it does, by warping the whole perspective of the, of the entire thing, I'm not sure that that necessarily helps me. You can see it's changing the perspective, but the nature of my perspective problems are a little more subtle than this. So I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that this is ever going to help me. This might work if I want to separate these buildings onto separate layers. Like look how nicely my largest building has been put into perspective. I'm going to escape for now. Look at another couple of tools uh, from the edit pull down transform uh, warp. And this one I like a lot. I'm going to zoom in a little because it gives me more control over parts of the image. Okay, see how I'm editing this uh, quadrant and it's not actually warping the rest of my drawing too much. See what's happening? All my edits are, are sort of localized. So I think this might be one of my best bets. Using this, I can adjust the perspective in such a way that it's fixing little parts and not the whole. This is looking pretty, it's looking a lot tighter. I kind of like that one. I'm gonna maybe accept. I'm gonna maybe accept this. And when I want to accept it, I hit enter. Okay, that's not too shabby. Now this thing is off site. I don't know that there's much that I can do about that. Um, this this one might be a problem. I think it wants to be on its own layer. Because when these three look right, this one doesn't. So how would I do that? I'm going to select the pixels that make up that image. In this case, I'm just using a regular rectangular, rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to control X for cut, Windows cut. Then I'm going to just control V for Windows copy. And that puts them on its own layer. Here it is layer one, and I'm going to call that tall building. And now it can be separately editable. And so if I want that to be on my site, uh, I know this has to be above the horizon, so maybe it needs to be taller still. Maybe this is a very tall building. I have two options uh, if I want this to be in perspective. It looks like, judging by the lines of perspective, it wants to be about there. But if I want it on site, maybe it's part of, you know, another building complex, maybe it wants to be there, it's going to have to be much taller. There, there's no way around that. So what if I go back to the free transform and just sort of warp that up a little, and that becomes actually a very tall building. Now it's a little more in the ballpark. I'm going to take that by hitting enter. And what if I can see that, well, yeah, it's kind of nice, but this is hitting the horizon a little early. You know this wants to hit the horizon way out here. It wants to intersect with that. Um, I'm going to try another tool, and this is a uh, on the filter pull-down lens correction. And what this gives me is uh, independent control uh, over um, uh, the, the, the kind of the perspective of a piece. It's meant for fixing uh, lens flare. And so if I, if I select the custom tab in the right, I actually also have ways of changing the perspective um, in, a, in ways that may help. Uh, you see I'm transforming the vertical perspective and here the horizontal perspective. And actually what it's doing is maybe, I don't know that this is really helping me, it's kind of moving it into perspective. 
can also change the angle of perspective. It's a very useful tool. I'm not sure for the type of subtle thing that I'm doing, um, it maybe is the best tool. It's kind of for fixing, like if you've ever taken a photo of a building and you know the edges look kind of crooked. Um, it's it's meant for fixing that. So I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure it's going to get my um, fix my perspective. I'm going to cancel that, but but it's something to be aware of. Uh, maybe I'll try my uh, edit transform my warp tool again, and all I really want to do is soften the angle of that top of this top uh, edge of the building. So I wonder if this will let me do that. If I just sort of pull this up a little. Pull this up a little. I don't want them to be too... I don't want them to be bowed, but I do want them to be softened. Is that better? That might be a little better. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to take that. Okay, so we've kind of adjusted the for perspective about as well as possible. At this point, uh, I know I don't need this extra uh, canvas. It's just a distraction to me. So I'm going to take my crop tool. I'm just going to crop. Uh, I know I'm not going to want anything larger than that. And I'm going to crop the bottom too. I like to take extra so I can crop out the Google Earth stuff. But in this case, I may need that because my composition is just not that strong. So I'm just going to crop it down to that. Uh, two schools of thought on that Google Earth. Some people leave it in. Some people like it gone. Uh, I think I prefer it gone. So here we go. Here's our perspective. What else can we adjust? Well, like with photos, um, we have adjustment over. I'm going to go ahead and first merge these two layers together. I don't want to have to edit them separately, um, although there, there might be instances where you want that. So I select both layers, right click merge layers and now they're both back on the same layer again which is what I want. Um, I can go to the image adjust exposure and if my if my photo is underexposed which is a common problem I can add exposure or maybe it's overexposed which is another common problem and I can I can uh, reduce the exposure uh, different things like that. What if I give it a little more exposure downplay the offset and up the gamma correction a little bit it says a handy preview thing, so you can sort of see what's going on. A little more exposure than I want. I want to get rid of that sort of purplishness about it. Ah, oh, they're paving my street. It's, it's outrageous. My timing is, is outrageous. So, I don't know. Is that an improvement? Maybe a little bit. It got rid of some of that. Um, maybe I'll keep that gray. Uh, maybe what I really want to do is remove that color so I can adjust from the image pull down adjustment hue saturation I can pull the color out of that so it looks a little more black and white see there it is with color there it is without that's really what I want to do and here I can adjust the lightness as well maybe I'll take it up a little there and say okay so now I got a nice gray contrast the buildings they don't have that purplish cast that they had and finally, we get to add some trees. We get to the fun part, uh, adding trees and people to indicate the scale of our buildings. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, I provided for you on Blackboard uh, in the Assets subdirectory of the Exercises folder in Photoshop Reference. Uh, these assets, I've, I found online some free shared Photoshop trees. These are actual trees. You can download those and keep them. And then also a couple of brush tips. We'll get to those in a second. So if I want to use those trees, I can just uh, do it in two ways. I can place them, uh, you know, that command. And this will just place that a copy of that Photoshop file right into my drawing. And that's kind of a fun way of doing it, if, uh, if that suits you. Uh, it's a little more detail than we need. Um, but start fairly convincing. Uh, you can also actually uh, open those files and bring them in as separate pixels and not placed files. Here I have the file open. You see it's just just a tree and it's really beautifully drawn with different layers uh, for the bark and the different colors of leaves for a nice complex tree. If you want to use them just as pixels though you're going to need to merge these layers before you bring them in. Um, I've uh, selected all three layers and I'll just say merge layers and that flattens everything onto one layer. Then you can say select all, 
control C and back in your native drawing you can just control V and it's going to go ahead and put that on its own layer. Okay, and then once you have that, you can go edit, free transform, break it down. Uh, maybe it's more useful depending on what you want to do. You have, uh, I think, more editing capability if it's actually in there as pixels. Um, but uh, two, two ways of doing it. Okay. Uh, another, another fun, and the, all the trees look different too, so they're very cool. I'm going to go ahead and delete those two layers after I hit enter to accept it. Delete layer one, delete the layer that has my placed file as well. So we didn't talk much about the, the tips yet. Uh, every every uh, brush that you use in Photoshop, every eraser, every pencil, all has a tip on it. And when I go to the brush tool, which as you'd ima imagine is just a brush for drawing stuff, uh, control Z, uh, why does that line look like it does? Well, it does because it's got a certain brush tip. From this brush pull down, I can select different tips and all sorts of sizes. Uh, I can change the size here. Oh, they're actually paving my street now. And um, different types of brushes, okay? Same holds true, control Z to undo. For the eraser tool, um, based on how you have the brush tip set, it determines how the tool behaves. Control Alt Z, Control Alt Z to get rid of that, okay? So I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call this one trees. It's just an empty layer. And with that current, I'm going to draw some trees on there using a tree brush tip. Okay, so when I when I start the brush tool, uh, where's my? Uh, uh, I don't know where my brushes are. So what do I always do? I go to the window pull down. There it is. There's a brush palette. Here it is, and it shows all my different brushes, my brush presets, and different ways of looking at brushes. This is unbelievable with the street paving. So. I've already loaded these custom brush tips into my drawing, okay? Um, so you'll see down here I have uh, these cool little trees. Um, and I can just draw a tree by simply clicking on there. Control Alt Z, Z, Z. Uh, so let's see. So how will you load these? It's called a brush library. So once you have your brush presets open, on this little flyout at the right, you're just going to go to load brushes and then look for the ABR file. I've given you two of them, one for trees and one for silhouettes. So you just load that, and then it puts those definitions at the end of your uh, preset list. So with, with a nice tree current, um, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the color and give it a nice green color. And I could just pick trees. How is that size uh, determined? Well. You can always adjust the size here. It's it's in pixels. You can adjust it there. We'll take it down to maybe 60. We'll see how that's looking. Maybe a little too small, or maybe about right. Who knows? And you can also adjust the size by using the right bracket key. Now I'm not seeing it on my cursor at the moment, but I'm going left bracket key to make it smaller, right bracket key to make it larger, and that's a qu very quick way to just indicate some trees. Um, and that's all we really need for what we're doing. Maybe it's autumn. Maybe I'm going to have a few, you know, uh, color change going on. I'll try some different tips. This looks like it might be a evergreen, so maybe I'll go with something a little, uh, a little more green-blue. Ah, too big. We're up in the 60, 80 neighborhood, somewhere around there. So a really quick way of, of just adding uh, indications of scale, okay? Very quick, one, one click. It doesn't get much quicker than that. There's also a, a brush for silhouettes. And these are, I haven't played with too much yet, but there's all different types of people. Let's just try one of these and see what it looks like. All right, so there's a guy, a guy silhouette, giant. 
Uh, we'll kick this down to about the same range that we're working in. And uh, that's still too big, obviously. Let's kick him around 50, see what it looks like. And for silhouettes, we'll just make these black. And let's see what we get. So, yeah, just a couple of people. Don't overdo it. <laughs> and with the bracket, you know, they get smaller as they go into the distance. And you can try different people. There's a family. And, again, they, they come in very large. Control Z. And we're up in the, around the 50 range, 30, something like that. So not too bad for free and for one click, yeah? And I think, you know, I've, I've overdone it a little bit already uh, with the people. But taking care and um, playing with the maybe the opacity of the layer and so on, uh, you can get a pretty nice indication of, uh, of scale. Um, let's see. Maybe I want to just give a little bit of a shadow on these buildings. I want to show you one more tool. Uh, what do I need to do to show shade on the buildings? Well, I need to select just certain sides. And we already know the way, the way to select is with these marquee tools and these lasso tools. There's also a couple of shortcut tools. Sometimes they work perfectly, sometimes less so. One of them is called the magic wand tool. And when I, with my layer current, if I just touch where I want, sometimes it just magically gets it right. If the construction is tight, meaning if the drawing has solid lines, it will find those borders easily. To add to your selection, you always hold down shift. Shift select, shift select, shift select. Now I've selected those faces and I can go to the adjustment and uh, image pull down adjustments exposure, take down the exposure and give a little bit of a three dimensionality to that and control D to get rid of the marching ants. Now it's getting better and better. You know, we're starting to see a fair indication that this is uh, actual three-dimensional buildings. Of course, it would be nice to add shadows. Is that possible? What are shadows really? Just a darkening on the ground. So I would have to darken that base area layer. So I would need to actually draw in the shape of that shadow. Okay, so what does it look like? It comes in something... Uh, Maybe like this, and comes out, and it hides in back of the building. Again, to do more than one, you hold down Shift. This one is going to have a very large shadow, of course. Oh, that rumbling is just unbelievable. And lastly, this one. So what have I just done? I've, I've just sort of eyeballed where I think the shadows might fall if these were actually casting shadows. I've selected pixels on the base aerial, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, ramp down the exposure here and see if it starts to look like they're casting shadows. And that's not too bad. And I'm going to say OK and Control D to get rid of them. All right, and so there we have it. There's our sort of finished, very quick and dirty rendering. Mine was mine looks crappy and it was done in a hurry. Yours is going to look very good because you've taken a lot of time with it. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And this is going to be Plano Perspective 01. And for presentation, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to format this in Illustrator. It's a three sheet project, right? Uh, so I'm going to say Control N for a new file. Uh, we're going to go Print, Landscape, Three Artboards, OK. I'm going to have my layer dialog open, make a new layer called Photoshop Files. With that layer current, I can go to File Place. And there's my perspective drawing. It's going to place it right in there. That ah, looks pretty nice. You leave yourself some border, hold down Shift. There it is.
So maybe I want to crop it a little bit now. I can use a clipping mask. Maybe I do, turns out, want to get rid of that Google stuff. Uh, I'll have my clipping mask there. Something like that. Select both entities, make a clipping mask, and there's my final rendering. It's not bad. And so what else? Uh, maybe I'll want a little title bar on this. Uh, this should all be on a new layer, of course. Plano. Just, you know, make it look like something. All right, and uh, since it's a three sheet set, I might format all my sheets the same way with a title bar, one that looks much better, of course, and so on. All right, so that's the project, and that's how you do a quick and dirty Photoshop thing.